Folks, you know as well as I do what exactly we're looking at here. This is the country with the most beautiful countryside, the very best people and indeed the very best food. I am of course talking about none other than Serbia here in Victoria 3 in 1836. This is the new playthrough going forward at least until the open beta is done. And you know this is honestly quite the special playthrough because Serbia is incredibly difficult by which I mean that we have literally nothing. We are a tiny country, we have very very few people and we are incredibly incredibly backwards which well makes a lot of sense without any institutions that give us higher literacy and so on and so forth. We're going to act on all of this and hopefully have a more prosperous future for the people of Serbia. In case you didn't know this and I assume that you don't, in 1835 they actually passed a constitution that said you have three branches of government, you have uh, civil rights, you have all that stuff going on and then the Austrians and the Ottomans said I don't think so pal, I think you're gonna stop doing liberty and you're going to keep doing feudalism. Milos Obrenovic here was not a friend of this constitution, he was kind of forced to pass it, but he also isn't a friend of somebody intervening in his business and in this case it is indeed the Ottomans and the Austrians that want to ensure that nobody here gets any funny ideas. I think it's very easy and very interesting to take a look at what Serbian politics are like on the outset of the game here. We're looking at a situation where everything that is dominating the idea of Serbia is of course against the common powers in the region. Not to mention that even in Serbia there is now the debate between the arch conservatives where Prince Milos Obrenovic says hey I should be the sole ruler of Serbia and my kind should of course be dominating politics here as well or where we maybe have more liberal forces such as the intelligentsia that say no 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 we need a constitution. We need not just independence from the Ottomans but also from autocracy. We need to move on into that direction. And I'm really looking forward to this because I do think that this should change quite a bit when it comes to how we perceive this nation and of course the internal politics. Now taking stock of our laws here it is fair to say that uh, we... <laughs> Yeah, we're pretty backwards, right? Autocracy, we got state religion, we got peasant levies, hereditary bureaucrats, you you know it, we got the full drill, including of course serfdom and traditionalism. Uh, no matter what we do, this is of course going to be a bit of a slower start. I assume that I'm gonna, you know, base, uh, basically do maybe 20, 30 years just in this first episode to get out of this rut, but I'm gonna tell you, yeah, obviously there is a lot to fight for here and there is a lot that the Serbian people currently do not have. Now, we are led by a jingoist right here, that is Georgi uh, Bogic. Definitely not how you pronounce that, that's okay. We got Vladimir right here as a theocrat, that is actually interesting. A theocracy with constitutional rights might be an alternative at the end of the day compared to an autocracy in a monarchy. We got a moderate right there and then we got a couple of pacifists right here, which I'm actually not too unhappy about because, well, pacifism makes it so that we can go towards national militia and everybody will be in favor. Why would I want this? Well, okay, let's talk about our <laughs> diplomatic situation right here. Now externally what is going on is pretty straightforward. We are currently basically just a vassal. We are a protectorate of the Ottoman Empire but that Ottoman Empire is on its last legs. It's 1836 and in 1856 the Tanzimat journal entry runs out and if they fail it that means we will become free by default. If they succeed with it well honestly I don't even want to think about it. Let's just hope that that doesn't happen. What matters is that currently we are under the iron grip of Sultan Mahmoud Osmanolu right here and it's not that fun. It's it's not fun at all. They suppressed our attempt at liberalizing and well they even laughed at our flag. I read that on Wikipedia in particular. <laughs> it's it's very funny to me. Uh, I'm pretty sure the Romanians had a similar case where they weren't allowed to fly their own flag and the Ottomans basically were like come on that's ridiculous. What a silly idea. Where this leaves us is of course that we need to stand up against the Ottomans and a native enemy although they have opposed us in the past we have Metternich of course ensuring that there should be no nationalism on the Balkans. Uh, maybe the Austrians could work with us should they liberalize. If they do it we might want to work with them. Other than that I think our strongest allies are of course the Romanians and the Greeks and then last but not least maybe the Russians. We're going to take a look at what we can do there but one thing is for sure we are planning for the downfall of the Ottoman Empire so that we can then spread our very own culture and prosperity in the region. But of course the big question here is what is that culture? There is a direct confrontation between liberal forces in Serbia and Milos Obrenovic. Now he is again in favor of an independent Serbia but an independent Serbia where he is the independent all-powerful lord. And yeah, that's obviously not what our Serbians here want. The intelligentsia, for example, actually pressured him into passing that constitution that was later repealed because of Ottoman and Austrian pressure. But be that as it may, today they are pacifists. And honestly, I'm not against this. I like pacifists in this context because it will allow me to pass national militia. 
And I'm gonna be honest with you, I haven't played a lot when it comes to, uh, uh, you know, actual conscripts in this beta, but I think with how small we are, we have to rely on national militia no matter what. So, so I'm just gonna be honest with you right now. If we build up a standing army, I won't be able to actually industrialize because this standing army will eat up too much money of mine. I'm gonna go ahead and straight up just say National Militia is where we're going to go and I'm gonna start initiating this right away. You can see that of course the landowners are also actually in favor because their leader is a jingoist and they prefer National Militia over peasant levies. Now other than that we have our work cut out for us. I mean traditionalism, <laughs> serfdom, land-based taxation, state religion, it's all really awful. But all right, what do we do with technology? I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't think, I don't think as long as we are just a one province miner that we're gonna get a lot of benefits out of industrial tech. Ah, now this right here, I could see mobile artillery could be used, skirmish infantry could be huge. Ah, uh, yeah, I think we're gonna go with these. Is there anything in society that could really pull me in? Maybe nationalism? Oh, we could stir national uh, nationalist agitation once we have nationalism. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go for nationalism right away and after that, we're gonna focus on Napoleonic Warfare and General Staff. Nationalism is interesting because there is a new mechanic that came with the open beta that lets you stir basically unrest in uh, locations that are your homelands for your primary cultures that don't belong to you. And we're gonna do exactly that to the Ottomans and the, uh, to the Austrians if we get a choice. Now, let me just actually take stock here as well. This is a playthrough. I just wanna point this out. This is why I'm so interested in doing this playthrough. Uh, we also put up the Netherlands and Siam in that one poll, right? And I'm playing neither right now because I want the naval mechanics to fully work and that only happens with a full release of 1.5. I am playing, Ugo uh, I'm playing Serbia, not Yugoslavia yet because I don't really wanna take any colonies and see whether we can survive. Now we do have a pretty okay resource situation. We do have iron here and let me actually uh, take a look at all of these resources, right? The Ottoman market, that is where we are currently. Do we have coal here anyway? Yes, we have coal in southern Serbia. That is great news because that is a really quick way to then start industrializing from there. We do have some iron in our very home province here, but also in other locations. Big, big fan. That means that we can definitely build a pretty big industry around this. What about sulfur? Yeah, sulfur is a pain point. The Austrian Empire, by the way, if they lose Venice, has zero sulfur. Isn't that insane? Ah, and we have zero sulfur as well. Um, we're gonna be an import economy, I think. Uh, for the start here, at the very least, I would say that we're going to go into logging camps because logging camps will then finance, of course, our actual construction sectors. And from there, um, iron? Yeah, I think we're gonna focus on logging camps and iron mines just to get the construction sectors going and then we'll pivot just towards, I guess, everything agricultural. <laughs> We're not in a great economic position here, let me tell you that. I should of course also say, just as a friendly reminder here, that we are in a position where the MAPI, so the market access price impact, is pretty severe for us. We're at 65%. Oh, the Danube River is a really good benefit, but we don't know what railways are, so we can't get any bonus from that, and we can't build any ports in this location because, well, there is no coastline. So this means that we will have a really, really local economy for a long time going forward, not just for the first couple of years like it normally is for, you know, Spain, Italy, Germany, France, and so on. What even are the ideologies of our leaders here? We got a moderate, um, that does seem to be fitting. He basically is just a person who wanted to rule, who liked autocracy and so on, so that is him being a landowner. But beyond that, he seemed to be fairly flexible. This son right here, Milan Obrenovic, um, actually only ruled for a couple of weeks. Basically, I'm pretty sure the way it worked was that his father stepped down because he was like, I'm not ruling with this super nerdy constitution that you just forced on me. So his son took over, the son was already dying, so he died after a couple of weeks. And then his brother took over, who ruled, I think, until the 60s or something like this. Anyway, interesting story for us, probably not all too relevant because they're all just moderates. Pretty boring. Now, what I'm gonna do right away here, I think I'm gonna start damaging relations. I'm not gonna turn them into a rival just yet. With Austria, they're conciliatory. Um, well, they don't want us to be a nation state. That has to be said. Whether the AI understands this or not, you know, that's something else. But Austria does not care for this. Now, we currently don't know what nationalism is, so I'm gonna say, hey, just support my rule, make me get free from the Ottomans and we're fine. And then we, of course, have Russia, who are our biggest friends. Wow, I, I love you, Nikolai Romanov, my good old traditionalist ally. Wow, and that just passed incredibly quickly. Now, we currently can only, at most, actually mobilize 14 battalions, which is not great news, just for the record. Which means that we will have roughly, what, 19 troops when we actually do go to war here. <sighs> okay, let's talk about actually getting some people going here. Um, I think... 
Now let me think about this. In the current stage of the game, horses are actually really good if you are on the offensive. Um, cannon artillery obviously is also great, but pretty, yeah, right now, we probably want to go with lancers as long as we just have cannon artillery. Obviously that is going to change in due time as we research this, but for the time being, the way I see this is, I'm going to spend all of my points here on these lancers because our standing army will actually be amassing experience and experience is really good because it upgrades your offense and your defense directly, which means, um, I'm gonna build these lances here. I'm then gonna, I think, get rid of the line infantry right here and just have five lances just as the standing army. We are a pure horse army. And then let's talk conscripts, right? I'm gonna have five conscripts that are line infantry just as a defensive force. And then maybe more horses. Honestly, I am I am not sure. Horses are not bad at all here, but this is a really horse-heavy army. Currently, there are no penalties to doing this, so we might as well. And in the early stages of the game, going on the offensive is actually more beneficial than defending. That turns around once you get, uh, once you get trench infantry. But until then, I think we want an offensively-minded army. Listen, if we go to war with uh, the Ottomans anyway, I'm pretty sure it's going to be with the support of a major power, so our, maybe our own army doesn't matter all that much. Fingers crossed. Oh, and check out who is here, Alexander Karadorjevic. Um, I'm pretty sure that this guy's birthday is wrong in-game, but it doesn't really matter. This is the man who would later become the Prince of Serbia. I like that a lot. I like that he's hanging around here just for the record because his family indeed then was the uh, royal family of Yugoslavia as well. Mmm, and I hate this. The landowners are petitioning the government to pass professional army. I think it's a mistake. I think it is a huge, a massive, and unbelievable mistake because we just can't maintain it. I'm sorry, we cannot maintain that. I might still have to pass it just to keep them happy here, but even if they lose 20 points, they still wouldn't be revolutionary. I mean, honestly, if they go revolutionary, it's their loss, right? Um... What I'm gonna do for the time being, because you are a moderate, you are a theocrat. I love the theocracy thing so much. I could put an intelligentsia leader here. And we might want to take a look at, you know, rolling some of these things back. Uh, we could go with dedicated police force as well. I actually do like that a whole lot. Okay, let's form a government with the intelligentsia. Because we do need to mobilize, uh, we do need to modernize. This is very important for Serbia. If you start out here, you need to make things happen no matter what. Now, I don't think that state religion matters. Everybody currently is orthodox in this country. Anyway, it just doesn't play that big a role. Same goes for national supremacy right here. None of these things really need to be exchanged. Um, we could go with guaranteed liberties, but honestly, that's not that big a deal. I would much rather like to get rid of tenant farmers. Homesteading, or rather of serfdom, I mean. Homesteading, honestly, is such a radical change, but I'm gonna be honest with you, I like homesteading. Even from the idea of Prince Milos Obrenovic, because the conflicts that were fought within Serbia were about who owes whom what, because of course there was also some a, a sort of tenancy agreement with the Ottoman, with the Turkish landowners, and at the same time he has been opposed by the old guard as well. What I'm gonna do is here, I'm gonna break the power of the landowners at least to a degree. It's really difficult, just for the record, to really roleplay these first initial years because you need to do something to modernize your country into a state that is actually viable. And I think that this is the best way going forward here. All right, and you know what? I normally don't really work with decrees all that often. Um, I'm gonna go ahead. We definitely want this. Uh, I, I really like the idea of enlistment efforts. I do love social mobility. <sighs> Emergency relief. Not necessarily all that awful here, but I think for the moment, let's go with encourage agricultural industry. Let's just make sure that we can hopefully make as much money as possible. Jesus, dude, I gotta say, uh, homesteading is passing incredibly quickly here. That would definitely be a huge benefit for us. I mean, just unbelievably powerful. I think the best lens through which we can interpret this is that we are trying to re-implement the old constitution that was rejected because that one, of course, also said no more serfdom. We're doing this and this could potentially agitate the landowners as is, but the reality is a constitutional Serbia is what should have been implemented without Austria and Metternich anyway. So let's go ahead and do that farming boom. The encouragement of agricultural development in northern Serbia has led to a small spike in production at our livestock ranches. We should look into using this before it goes to waste. Oh, hello. How nice is that? I didn't even know this was an event. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And oh wow, there is the law. It actually just passed. We now have homesteading. 
We are making strides here to liberalize and I'm a huge fan. It's 1838 and in 1838 is actually when the Ottomans forced the Ottoman constitution on the Serbs, which basically said, you are subservient to the Ottomans, get screwed, this is what you get. We're doing the opposite thing and I'm a huge, huge fan of this. Um, we're trying to build a constitutional state. Let me get this straight. We could pass some form of voting here. I don't think that this was necessarily be bad. I don't think we care about changing legal guardianship at all. I do like the idea of dedicated police force. We kind of urbanize into this. Uh, we give the power to an elite that is, of course, the intelligentsia and the petite bourgeoisie here that are interested in an independent Serbia rather than in a feudal Serbia. Other than that, this is also, of course, a very welcome change. Or Well, it would be anyway. I'm going to go ahead, I think, and yeah, just pass this one right here. Dedicated police force. There you go. Basically, everybody's in favor except the rural folk. That's okay. Dude, I gotta tell you, by the way, I love passing things in a country with a huge authority basis that is unused because this really speeds it up. Look at this. Oh, we have an unacceptable government. That's not good. But look at the legislative efficiency, right? They're actually countering this. Ooh, and we are now illegitimate. Um, we may have to shift this around a bit. Let's, yeah, sure. Let's form, you know what? Let's form a popular government right here. This reform that we're doing right now is uh, welcome by all, I think, anyway. Oh. Wow, yeah, look at the land on us really falling off a cliff there. Not a surprise, but they are, of course, still a huge factor in our politics here. That was unbelievably fast. <laughs> Seriously, that was unbelievably fast. Ah, uh, okay, let's take a look at this, right? I think I need education. I need more manpower and I need education. I need both of them incredibly desperately. I really do like our current annual projected pop growth. That is massive. That is really significant for us here. Ah, but having a higher literacy rate will make recruiting for our army later on, once we actually, you know, have this national militia stuff going on, much faster. Because you can see right here that the more advanced forms all require more officers, which of course require qualifications. So I think we're going to pass religious schools first and only after that go towards uh, charity hospitals as well. But yeah, we without a doubt need both of these institutions uh, incredibly fast. And oh boy, as we are in a pretty fluid stage of this country, because again, it's we are between all the chairs basically, rousing speech captivates the public. This afternoon, Vladimir Ljubicic, leader of the Orthodox Church, delivered a fiery speech advocating for the enactment of religious schools. I'm gonna say that this reflects well on him. He gets popularity and we get interest group pop attraction. Listen, we are currently a principality. Whether we will remain a principality is a totally different thing. Yeah. Obviously, hey, you're going to be there for the youth, you're going to be there for the poor, and you're going to educate and take care of them. Maybe you are better than the landowner, better than the king. Folks, and here we go again. We have everybody's favorite event right here. 20 free prestige. Thank you so much. Listen, I will always take this. I will abuse this. You cannot stop me. I will not be stopped. Well, and there you go. And I'm going to be honest with you. I am now really actually seeing a direction. When you are a country this small, there will be some min-maxing. You will go, I need to do this or that to be even ready to do anything. But I think we're kind of past that point now. We are at an exciting point where we are saying we are strengthening the church to an unbelievable amount right here. I'm going to go with charity hospitals, obviously, which gives them even more power. I think sooner rather than later, they will be lifted atop the landowners. And then we might be asking, is the future of Serbia, even a liberal constitutional Serbia, really this man right here? Oh, and there they go. The expected war is now going down between Egypt and the Ottomans. If you take a look at these numbers here, they are tiny. Do keep in mind I'm playing with my Victoria Tweaks mod modification, where I got rid of everybody's barracks so that the AI actually starts building really, you know, racial driven troops rather than just infantry. But unless somebody intervenes, I reckon the Ottomans might have this. Uh, the closer the Ottomans come to the Tenzimid, the worse it is for us. Wow. And there are the charity hospitals. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to upgrade this a little bit. We're going to upgrade this, as you can see. I think I might have to build up our bureaucracy here. But honestly, I'm not actually sure that we do. Uh, the more important part here, in my eyes anyway, is that we are now in a position where the church is the strongest faction. And I looked around a bit. I, I said to myself, okay, is, this, is there an example here of something going like this? And the answer actually is yes. Montenegro, interestingly enough, was ruled by Prince Bishop Petar Petrovich Niegos, and he was in a position where he was directly opposed to the chieftains, to the uh, basically the tribal representations, the landowners of, of course, Montenegro in his policies. And let me ask this, I guess in the game, he's surely just... Uh, yeah, he's a landowner. Fair enough. But the reality was that they basically stood against him because he wanted autocratic rule. 
I'm going to be honest with you. I think the Orthodox Church with Vladimir Ljubicic here is in a very similar role. They want to be the supreme rulers of Serbia because they think what they will do for Serbia is best. Even if that means getting rid of the existing hegemony, the existing monarchy. Now, this is a very a radical change and this is a very quick change. 1840, stemming mostly from the fact that I'm not using our authority for anything, which means that I can pass laws very quickly. I think I'm going to go ahead. I think the Orthodox Church will initiate transitioning into a theocracy right here. And who's against this? The landowners and the industrialists. I mean, the industrialists aren't relevant and the landowners, well, they haven't really done much for this country. They have suppressed the liberal and the national constitution of Serbia. And I think their time is over. Miracle workers. Reports abound of a miracle performed by clergymen in Belgrade. Such displays are promoting religious piety throughout Serbia. Theocracy will fill, oh my God, our hearts with faith. Plus 40% enactment success chance or plus 20% enactment success chance right here and then interest group attraction. Uh, 69%. This, this stuff is crazy. That is insane. And here they are. Okay, fair enough. I just talked about it. I just discussed. You can modernize. You can do all of these things if you can be faster than the resistance. And now we have the landowners threatening a rebellion to preserve the monarchy, which again reminds me a lot of what apparently was going on in Montenegro. Uh, this is going to be very, very interesting. I think we will outpace them by like a whole good bit. But yeah, no, the landowners are traitors. They are traitors. That is how that has to be seen. The theocracy here will maintain itself. Interesting. Greece wishes to enter an alliance with us. Um, yeah, I think I'm in favor of that. I, I think that's great. We're both orthodox. They are a bit more Western minded than we are. But we are in a position where we have a common enemy and I think where we aren't really looking at each other trying to take each other's territory. Uh, and I'm gonna be honest with you, it looks as though this rebellion will fire. We will have to fend of the old aristocracy and the western industrializers. And there you have it, the Serbian civil war is going to break out. Now the Ottomans are gonna get involved in this as well on our side, luckily. They are east here of the river and in the mountains. Uh, very troublesome, very, very troublesome indeed, especially because this is a Karad Georgevich, not how you pronounce that, which I believe, by the way, means Black George, and it refers to the dark hair of the original founder of the house, who I believe was called George. Uh, anyway, we have the Ottomans on our side. I wish they weren't here, but listen. I will destroy them. We are acting here in the name of Serbia and we are going to establish our very own theocracy if needed. Oh, and the Austrians are siding with the Ottomans for transfer of Tunis. Those two are really, really happy to cooperate here. huh? <laughs> Interesting. I don't like it. I really don't like it. But Austria sometimes does become a quasi-colonial or colonialist and imperialist nation. So taking Tunisia here may be something that they will be doing long term in this particular playthrough as well. The rebellion will be crushed. That much is now for certain. Well, well, well. I have built a bigger Montenegro right here. We are now under the leadership of Patriarch Dragan Abakumovic. And he is an exciting fellow because he stands for the Orthodox Church and he's a theocrat. So everything that he should be. Uh, expensive taste, meticulous. Okay, he'll be fine. Obviously, the civil war was won very, very easily. And honestly, I'm quite happy. We didn't lose all that much in terms of population there. We're definitely going to catch up on that eventually. Now, what we're doing now is basically just preparing to leave the Ottoman market. It will happen. There's no two ways about it unless they succeed in the Tanzimat, which let's pray they won't. Uh, but as it stands, we are in a really, really well set up position. I am also, by the way, opening up our borders just so that I can, you know, invite some agitators should that happen. Uh, I'm doing this most Mostly because we need agitators in the first place if we actually want to go on and, you know, do some national agitation. Let's take a quick look around. We can see Texas joined the US. That's nice to see. We got Russia eating a whole bunch of their territories right here. And then Egypt is probably going to get completely dunked on. Oh, uh, and the Ottomans have a defensive pact with the Austrians. So the Austrians are not going to be our friends. Um, that much should be clear. I am friends now with Wallachia, which is very nice. And I'm pretty, pretty friendly with Russia as well. Very nice to see. But just looking at this, I'm like, how would I potentially ever oppose the Austrians and the Ottomans at the same time? Yeah, I don't know either. And now I am happy to report that we have crossed 1 million in GDP. You love to see it. Obviously, we're still not doing that hot. And obviously, things are going to get worse in about 10 years time. But 
hey, it's an achievement. All right, and I think it is now time that I actually start building the first construction sectors. You can see I went 12 years just building with the base 10, and honestly, it's really, really good. But I do think we are now strong enough where we can move past that. You can see that we still have a lot going when it comes to our peasants. There's a lot of potential going forward. And of course, we have a really good birth rate, but maybe more importantly, our literacy rate is shooting up because of the decree and of course, because of the institution. We are incredibly straightforward here when it comes to, well, basically everything. We now also have a petite bourgeoisie leader, Mihailo Panic here, which is an amazing name, by the way, who is a protectionist, letting me go to interventionism and protectionism if I wanted to. Right now, agrarianism is fine, but I think protectionism is indeed better. The way I see this, we are becoming a pretty well-organized nation, although incredibly, incredibly cemented in reactionary elements. But these reactionary elements are uniquely Serbian. Instead of landowners that don't care for Serbia, that only care for their own power, we have the Orthodox Church in control, which of course pits us very, very nicely together with Russia here. Oh, and we now actually have an agitator, Mirko Paschkas, and he is a landowner. Ah, oh, God, you make me sick. See, if this guy was part of a government, we could now send him out into Bosnia to agitate, agitate Serbian pops, making it so that they would be more likely to revolt. But he is not of our government. Uh, maybe at some point we will cooperate with the landowners. Ooh, hello. Maybe we should cooperate with the landowners. I mean, hell. Why wouldn't we, right? Let's pass protectionism and we'll take a look at it from there. I definitely want to send this man out and, you know, stir some trouble. Uh, all right, now let's take a look at our relatively long-term government plans right here. We have worked with the rural folk amazingly. They love it, we love it, everything is great. We also have now actually crossed, by the way, one million population. Thank you so much, my dear Orthodox Church, for giving me this massive, massive bonus. I love it. Ah, but where do we go from there? We uh, are in a really good general position. This would be a pretty high quality government. Can I unify both of these? Nope, I, I cannot. They do not like each other. Now, I do like the rural folk, but I will say, this guy's a theocrat and they have an agitator. We're gonna stay as we are right now. We are very conservative. We are very backwards. Despite, of course, having a whole lot of laws already changed now into no longer being conservative and backwards. We could go towards landed voting here, but honestly, I'm not feeling that, at least not right now. What I am feeling is Mirko Paskas. I need that man to stir some national agitation in Bosnia. Let's take a look at this right here, right? Currently, they have no turmoil, at least no visible turmoil. If we go back to him and actually click this button right here, stir a national agitation. Are we going to see some uptick here? Anything? Damn. Everything in the Ottomans is very calm, huh? That's frustrating. You know, and I was wondering why the Ottomans weren't pushing further into Egypt either after already being really successful initially. And the answer is, wow, France has sided with Egypt in a defensive pact. Um, the Ottomans are going to fail Tanzimat, which is amazing news for us. But what comes after that, I'm not so certain, because we have some real interest groups active here in the Balkans. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, I think we are as well set up as we could have been. We have great laws, we are in a really interesting position with theocracy. Trust me, there's just so much interesting content coming from that. Whether we will ever see it, we'll see, but it doesn't really matter. We have a great army, and we have now very, very experienced lancers. Look at this, we have a unit-level elite because these lancers have been here for quite some time. And this gives us a really significant bonus for, you know, everything they are doing. I'm looking forward to using them, because they do now have a higher offense value than the mobile artillery. But we'll see how that goes in the first place. I am scared, don't get me wrong here, I am absolutely scared about what we can actually do about the Ottomans here, because it looks as though we will be on our own. And, my friends, it happened. The Ottoman Empire failed their Tanzimat, meaning they are now an unrecognized power and we are free. Which comes with upsides and with downsides, as you can see, because, well, <laughs> our market is kind of screwed up. But I am confident, because I'm pretty sure that we can actually figure this out. And you know what? But obviously what we actually need is a port. We need ability to trade with the outside world that isn't just Wallachia, Austria, Hungary and the Ottoman Empire. I mean, come on. Oh, and look who's in the Russian market. We could theoretically join the Russian market. First of all, we would be getting a trade agreement. And then they would probably force me into their market. And honestly, I'm very inclined to do this. If we can get Russia on our side here, we might even be able to stand against Austria-Hungary. 
That's anyway, that's my calculation here, and it seems pretty all right. Oh, and check it out. Prussia is now in 1857 going for Schleswig and Holstein. It looks as though they are indeed ramping up to form Germany, or at least to attempt to form Germany. At the very latest, I would guess, if Germany, if Prussia challenges Austria-Hungary, that is when our time to shine is coming in against the Ottomans. All right, and now here we have the most important technology, at least, you know, in our case right now. Oh, and I would love to have this as soon as possible as well. But what this now allows me to do, and this is very early, I normally never do it this early, is to go for mass conscription. Mass conscription is huge because we are are a tiny country that relies so heavily on having a militia. Now this will bring up our conscription rate like nothing else before. The morale loss is obviously bad but we can surely mitigate this and the training rate is massive. It is time that we become a nation that can defeat the Ottomans. Maybe. Oh, and as I am passing it, it appears that I have made the rural folk decently angry enough to, uh, well, trigger the rise of radicalism. Under the leadership of Draža Božović, the radical movement is becoming very widespread in Serbia. Whether we support or oppose them, this heralds a time of great change and reaction. <sighs> I think I'm gonna support the conservative establishment here. To complete a reactionary victory, I just need to... Right... Get rid of your ideology, huh? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say exactly this. Can't I just kick you out? <laughs> Let me ask you, can I end this right here? Never should have messed with me. Wow, um, that was a lot faster than it was in any previous playthrough. Look at that. The effort at a liberal revolution led by radical leaders in Serbia has been suppressed by the powers that be reasserting their power and pushing the radicals into obscurity. I don't need more loyalists, I would rather have the legitimacy making it so that we are permanently at 100 no matter what I do. Yeah, I like that. And I'm gonna actually take the armed forces in here because they are giving us a huge bonus right here and will let us pass this law even faster. Listen, sometimes there is no liberal revolution even though you may have a journal entry for it. We're currently looking at a very stable theocracy that is looking towards the future and that future is indeed war with the Ottomans. Oh lord, okay, and here we are. Prussia and Austria-Hungary are going to war. And this will surely keep Austria-Hungary incredibly, incredibly busy. At least I would hope so. Maybe this is our opportunity. We haven't passed mass conscription just yet, but maybe indeed this is our opportunity. The more worn down the Austrians will be, the better for us. And the more likely will we actually be able to push into the Ottomans. And I'm going to be honest with you, I have been building up like crazy. We are in a really good position. You know, our standard of living is okay and so on. But I need this coal. If we don't get this lead and this coal, if we don't get the port right here, then... Yeah, I'm not sure how we're gonna make this work. So let's pray that we can make this happen. And here you have it now. Britain and Russia both side with Prussia. The Ottomans, oh my God, this is a massive war. The Ottomans and France are siding with the Austrians. Uh, I maintain that if we don't do it now, we shall never do it. I think now's the time. Let's, you know what? Let me take a look at this. I'm gonna return this state. And I might cry because this is pure chaos, but we have to capitalize on this chaos. Maybe. Hopefully. Um, <laughs> of course, Greece doesn't want to support us. You're my ally. How dare you? Now, what we will do is immediately mobilize everything. I mean everything. Can I get some more of this? Yeah, this is the maximum that we can currently recruit before we hit mass conscription and you can see here this is already a lot. With mass conscription we could do even more. Whether we can maintain it, listen, that's a different story. We can't really, you know, be... Beggars can't be choosers is all I'm saying. But we can be raising a ton of conscripts for the time being. All right, I'm gonna be honest with you. Nobody else is coming into this war right now. If nobody else is gonna come into this war, this might actually happen. I don't think the Austrians are gonna go in here. I'm gonna be cocky. I'm gonna claim Bosnia. Where is it? Where is my beloved, beloved Bosnia? There it is. I'm gonna claim it. This is gonna delay it a bit further. Maybe somebody else is gonna join on the enemy's side, but right now, I'm actually kind of confident. I'm not gonna lie to you. They are mobilizing, but they're going to Austria, obviously. Maybe we have a shot at this? Jesus Christ, this is the first primarily, almost exclusively militia army that I've ever ran. We gotta see how this goes. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. Maybe. Maybe this is working. 
We are currently attacking right here and we're winning this just because we have a much, much better offensive value right here. We have Shrapnel Artillery, of course. We got Skirmish Infantry. We got all these Lances. They do have Lances, but on the defensive side, they have Line Infantry. How experienced are you here? You are elite troops. Yeah, that's, that's nasty. It seems to be working. This one seems to be a lost fight. It currently looks as though we're winning, but I'm pretty sure this is a lost one. We just need to secure these three locations. That's that's all we need to do here, okay? The big, big, the massive, massive benefit that we have here is a very, very straightforward. Our replenishment rate in our troops is way higher. You can see this right here. This is because we have this technology uh, that makes it so that we recruit at a much, much higher per level rate. Whereas the Ottomans, I assume, if we take a look at their barracks right here, which surely, there they are, they are still running on this one. This is significantly lower. So every battle we won at the very start of this war makes their uh, troops less replenished and makes them have a significantly worse time. I think this is doable. The defense battles here are what is really worrying me because the more we are worn down on our side of the manpower, but you can see we are not stagnating, we are actually succeeding, but the more we are worn down and the more you blunder, you buffoon. Hanko Janko Horvatovic, how dare you? The more we blunder here, the riskier does it get. If they take our capital, we are done. So these battles can never be a loss, but right now they just break faster, they have significantly worse time all over, and that might just mean we get to do it. If we take Bosnia, we have access to Montenegro. And starting there, yeah, we might actually be doing this. And might I just say, we would actually be losing this if it wasn't for the Prussians commanding one of the Ottoman armies going up here in defense of Austria. Thank God that General Abdul Karim Nadir Pasha himself is showing up in Germany rather than down here. We can actually do that. Let's take a look, by the way, of what is actually happened in the German war. The Germans, the Prussians, I should say, already kicked out Schleswig. They took over. That, you know, never was a question. They just invaded and that was it. Other than that, we seem to have a bit of a stalemate here. We have advances into Bohemia, but also advances into Saxony and Silesia. Then on the other hand, the French here appear also to actually be advancing. Huh. Um, there's some heavy fighting going on here, and I think this fight will be decided by who capitulates first as an ally. If the French capitula uh, capitulate out very early on, the Prussians will then just push into Austria. If the Russians capitulate, maybe the Austrians actually have this. That is an absolutely magnificent war, and check this out. Tuscany was taken over by Sardinia Piedmont, and the Roman Republic has emerged. Good for them. And oh my god, we have it actually. Southern Serbia is partially occupied, Bosnia is fully occupied, Ottoman Montenegro is half occupied, and then Bulgaria is 57% occupied as well, which now makes it so that they can go below 0%. Oh my god. Our initial advance, I told you this, and I really, really like this dynamic. Maybe there's still some balancing that needs to go into this, but I really love the fact that if you're super aggressive at the start of the game, you have a shot because it's viable to be on the offense. Once you hit trench infantry, that gets turned on its head and you might just be running into a wall. But for the time being, our cavalry is deciding the war right here. Oh, and Prussia actually just kicked Bavaria out of this war as well. But so is Russia. Russia is out. So now it is Prussia and Britain against France and Austria. Oh, and check this out. France actually went with the Orléans. Yeah, that is why they are now the Kingdom of France. Very, very interesting. They are being pushed back here now, whether that is a permanent thing or just a short-lived thing after... Uh, it looks like they're gonna hold here. I think the Prussians may have this, or this may end in a stalemate, and a round two will come later. No matter what happens here, the fact that the Austrians actually were caught up in this made it so that we could actually push in here. And just for the record, by the way, all of the Ottoman troops now have arrived as well. These were the troops allocated to Germany, and yet they couldn't attack and win. They attacked us once here in Serbia, and they actually won a battle, but we retook this in subsequent uh, defense, uh, de defensive battles, and you can see it right here. Their ability to actually maintain their armed forces with manpower, much worse than ours. I am so excited. We are actually winning this on our own accord. Unbelievable. Folks, <laughs> it's over. It is actually over. We have won. We won that! Oh my god. I, <laughs> I am in awe, but I could not be happier. Now, at the same time, Prussia... Yeah, Prussia won't be happy. I'm pretty sure that we're not going to see a Germany in this playthrough entirely, because 
Austria seems to be winning this. But look at Serbia. We have taken Bosnia, we have taken South uh, Southern Serbia, and we have taken uh, Ottoman Montenegro, leaving us in an unbelievably powerful and yet, you know, still underdog position going forward. This feels good. Uh, folks, listen, I'll leave you right here. I'll see you tomorrow with another episode. I'll see you later. Alligator.